everyone, Jexie here. Welcome back to another video. Um, I'm kind of excited to talk about today's topic because it's something that I've heard a lot about and now that I've had a chance to like read the the studies in the medical journal, I think it's a really great time to talk about whether or not addiction is actually a disease. And if it's not a disease, what does that mean for the recovery community? So usually when people say stuff like they don't believe that addiction is a disease, um, they're saying it as a way to be hurtful. They're trying to say that they don't believe addiction is a disease, therefore addicts are just people who make bad choices and need to get their ch together, you know? So I was very interested when I saw this article, um, I printed it out. And it's called Brain Change and Addiction as Learning, Not Disease. And it's essentially a article that was in the New England Journal of Medicine, written by Mark Lewis, PhD. And I think it was from October 18th, 2018. And it's essentially talking about the fact that addiction is not a disease. And I thought that this was a really interesting topic for us to discuss on my channel. So first, before I go into this study, uh, some things about the author. So as some of you know, whenever I do research or discuss any topic, I like to consider the source, right? So anything, now the New England Journal of Medicine is, is a reputable source in itself, but I always like to think of the author. Who is the author? Why did they write what they did? Do they have any preconceived ideas about things? Because everybody's biased in their own ways and I think understanding who an author is before going into what they're studying and what they're writing about is important. So just some quick background information on, on Mark Lewis, PhD. Um, he is a retired professor of development psychology uh, and he was at the University of Toronto from 1989 to 2010. He has co-authored over 50 journal publications so that's a pretty big number uh, in regards to journal publications. He's written two books on science and addiction, and we can talk about whether that increases or decreases his credibility, but he is an addict himself, although I'm not sure that he calls himself an addict. Um, it's written that he quit using drugs at the age of 30. So I'm not really sure whether he classes it himself as somebody who has addiction because if he doesn't believe addiction is a disease then perhaps he doesn't classify himself as an addict but rather somebody who has a history of drug use. Um, so he caused a lot of controversy when he started writing and speaking about how addiction is not a disease. Now I think what's really interesting when you think about the fact that he has a history of drug use and I will say drug use and not addiction because I don't want to ever misclassify somebody. So as you guys know, I classify myself as an addict who has been in recovery for over six years. I think that using that term in relation to also being in recovery is important for breaking stigma. However, I would never classify somebody else as being an addict regardless of how I feel because I think it's really important important as individuals, especially those of us in recovery, that we're comfortable classifying ourselves as we feel is the most appropriate way to do so. So what I find really interesting before I go into the actual information that he's going through is one of the reasons that he decided that he wanted to kind of look at addiction differently as a disease is not because he thinks that addiction, if it's not a disease, makes you a bad person for using drugs. So I think it's funny, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of discussion in all communities on YouTube about the use of clickbait and how people use certain things in their titles to get people to watch their videos, right? We've all seen it. I will tell you right now that in my opinion, this entire study, this entire article is clickbait. That's what this is. It's not to say that he doesn't raise good points, but by specifically saying uh, addiction is not a disease, he's automatically causing controversy in the community, in the medical community, in the, in the recovery community, and he's not really... This whole article is not really all that controversial when you get to the meat of it. So let me just be clear that I think a lot of this is clickbaity. 
in a total like old school journal publication type way. So clearly YouTube is not the only place in which clickbaity catchy titles are used to grab attention and cause talks within a community. So his biggest um, concern when you classify addiction as a disease is the stigma. And a lot of what he says is that addicts are already dealing with stigma. And when you classify somebody as having a disease, it gives a stigma that there's nothing they can do about it, that it's an illness in which you have for lifelong and you're kind of powerless over it. So if you're powerless over having this disease, how could you possibly do anything about it? And he also says that some people uh, feel very disheartened when they hear that they have a disease and that they may recoil from that label. Now, I would say that this is why knowing an author's background is important because I, for one, have found that a lot of people in who have addiction feel relieved when they find out they have a disease because it makes it feel like they're not just making bad choices, that their free will's been taken away by something that's out of their control. So for me, it was relieving when I found that addiction is classified as a disease because it means I can't control it. It's like if you're diabetic and you find out every time you eat sugar, you have a reaction. It doesn't make you feel bad when you're classified as a diabetic. It gives you hope because you know like, okay, these particular foods are going to give me a problem and there's also something I can do about it and there's a way I can live a happy, healthy life. Maybe it's with certain types of limitations, but you don't have that fear of the unknown or you think that you're sick because you ate the wrong foods and it's because you're a bad person. So I think that that's really important when understanding his background is that Clearly, he was bothered by the stigma of addiction being considered a disease. That was something that probably made him feel powerless, and therefore he tried to look at addiction in a different way, probably for personal reasons. We all do that. We all look at things in a certain way because it's helpful to us. Authors of journal articles, they do the same thing. Although the studies or the, the information may be unbiased, they're not. And so I think it's important to understand that he may have come at this in a way because of his own feelings of stigma. And I think if we're looking at uh, somebody in the medical field who is dealing with stigma, we can understand how big of a problem stigma really is for people who suffer from addiction. Whether it's a disease or not doesn't change the fact that it's, it is a problem. Now, I'm also going to say as we go through this is a journal article in a medical journal, which means that most of the information here is very, very hard to understand. And I'm gonna do my best to explain it in as like layman's terms as possible. Um, but I would highly suggest reading it yourself and you know, understand that it is wordy, but the points are pretty clear. I just wanna make sure that people understand like I, there's little bits that I'm gonna read, maybe quote, but for the most part, I'm giving you my own interpretation because I think that it's easier for, for me to convey the message as opposed to me just reading you medical jargon. So essentially what his argument is saying is, is not that we need to look as addiction. If it's not a disease, that means you've like, you're just, you know, a bad person making bad choices. That is not what he's saying. What he's saying is, is that we should look at addiction uh, instead of through the disease model, through the learning model. Now, what does that mean? What that means is, is that he associates uh, factors around the environment, factors around a person's um, interactions with people, their family life, as contributing to them having a drug problem and not necessarily because they were born with some genetic predisposition to it. To it. Um, he gives four different ways. The other thing that's also really important to understand is that in this article, he doesn't discredit the, the medical research that's been done on the way that addiction impacts the, the pathology of the brain. Uh, addiction changes the hormones and pathways in the brain. And this study um, is essentially agreeing with everything the the disease model explains in regards to brain changes and chemistry changes in the body. He's not discrediting any of that research. Um, in fact, what he's saying is, is that all of those changes are caused by 
outside factors, not necessarily internal factors. So he's agreeing with everything the disease model says. He's just disagreeing with the cause. So I think that's important too, because yeah, you can say that even if you say addiction is not a disease, he's not discrediting all of the, the changes that we know happen when somebody becomes addicted to drugs. So he breaks it up into four sections and I am going to give, I, I don't think I'm really going to talk about each one because again, a lot of it has to do with um, different scientific areas of how brain pathology is. And I, I think that it gets, you know, when you're talking about neurotransmitters and dopamine and stuff, it's not to say that people can't understand it, but like, I don't want half of you to fall asleep halfway through the video because <laughs> that's not what I'm here for. But essentially is that he says that a lot of the things that we associate with addiction being a disease can also be associated if it was a, um, if addiction was explained through a, a learning model. So for example, we see changes in brain chemistry when people get, when they talk about like the reward model. So a lot of people know about like Pavlovian uh, studies where they ring a bell, they feed the dog, they ring the bell, they feed the dog, they ring the bell, they feed the dog, then they ring the bell, the dog starts salivating, ready to eat, right? So that's a learned behavior. And so what, what he says is that addiction is very similar to that, is that a lot of the changes that we see in our brain are associated with habits, right? Like if you use drugs, you get a high, you use drugs, you get a high, that when you're about to use drugs, you start to feel that high before you even put them into your body. That's a learned Pavlovian response. That's not because it's a disease. Now, the disease model also explains that same phenomenon, but they use it as in regards to pathology of the brain. So again, they're taking the same phenomenon in addiction and just using it, explaining it in two different ways. Um, a lot of people have heard of the study. It's like the Rat Park study. And if you haven't, it's real simple. They took a rat and they put him in a cage all by himself and they gave him two choices, like a bottle of plain water and a bottle of water with cocaine in it. And when the rat was in a cage by himself with nothing to play with, nobody around, like no other rats around, they almost always went for the cocaine laced water. But when you took that, those same rats and you put them in like a rat park, you know, you put them in a cage with a lot of other rats and things to play with and, and tubes to climb on and wheels and all that stuff. And you gave them the choice of the two waters, rats almost always went for the regular water. So there is a social component to addiction. And I, I think that this study recognizes that. And I, for me, I think this is one of the reasons. So let me back up for a second. He says that because 12 step programs use the disease model in regards to how they approach recovery, that they're missing out on, on a potential helping if it was like a learning model. I actually disagree with that. So yes, 12-step programs do state that addiction is a disease. They, they treat it that way. But a huge part of the 12-step recovery program is a behavioral environmental changes. You learn to have new habits, how to, how to deal with triggers, which is all what the learning model is talking about. Triggers in, rec in recovery, right? Like certain things are going to make you want to use it doesn't really matter whether it's because your brain associates those things with drug use because it's a disease or whether your brain associates those things with drug use because it's learned to. What matters is that those things are associated with drug use by your brain, right? So this entire article, the whole thing is it says pretty much is it takes every aspect of how your brain reacts during addiction and it explains it through learned behavior or environmental factors, which is interesting, right? What I find so funny is that this article, this one right here, has caused like an uproar in the in the recovery community in, in regards to uh, medical doctors and scientists and psychologists and stuff. And my big question is why? So like, for real, who cares? Whether it's an addiction or it's learned behavior, they both agree that addiction changes the way your brain works. Both sides say that, right? Both sides say once you're dealing with addiction, you have all these brain changes and you need some type of recovery program to deal with those changes. 
Also, this article is very clear that states that having the disease model is a good thing in regards to it brings in people like doctors to deal with recovery. If it's not a disease, then you wouldn't have anybody in the medical field helping recovering addicts. And for people who are on like medically assisted treatment or drug replacement therapy, they wouldn't have that those options if it wasn't considered a disease, right? So this the author acknowledges that having addiction considered a disease is beneficial to a lot of people. He's more concerned that we're leaving out other options for people to deal with recovery by ignoring environmental factors. And I'm not sure that by looking at addiction as a disease model that we are ignoring environmental factors. I think most recovery programs focus heavily on changing your environment and changing your habits and, and learning new behaviors. I think it's already inherent that we understand that those changes have to be made. So I know for like, again, going back to 12-step programs, although they consider addiction a disease, one of the first things you're taught to change is all people, places, and things you associate with drug use, right? That's, an, that's changing environmental triggers, which goes right in line with this whole learning theory. If our brain is associating these things with drug use, then we need to change them so that our brain doesn't have to deal with all these triggers, right? I don't think anybody would disagree with that. I think most of what this author is saying is essentially like we need to make sure that we're not just focusing on the, the medical aspect of, of addiction and, and think about the cause. The other th big thing that he talks about in this article, which I think is probably worth exploring, is he talks about that a lot of people who suffer from addiction had childhood trauma. Now, I am not one of those people. I suffered from addiction because... Uh, because I liked to use. I did have some trauma uh, stressors that I can probably say contributed to my addiction as an adult, but I did not experience any childhood trauma. I did not lose a parent. I did not, I was not sexually assaulted. I did not have any of these big childhood traumas that a lot of addicts do face. So it's not to say that only people with childhood traumas face addiction. Um, I do think think that people who are more isolated or who have dealt with childhood trauma, as this article says, may be more likely to suffer from addiction. But I think risk factors like that exist for a lot of things. For example, if you're, if from a young age, you learn to hide your feelings in food and you eat when you're stressed, you're probably more likely to have an eating disorder or diabetes or something food related as a problem later on. I don't, I think that just makes sense, right? But what he's trying to say is, is that if we can start identifying certain behaviors that lead to addiction, that we might be able to intervene before people have a problem with addiction, as opposed to only helping after we realize we have a problem. Now, I think that that could be beneficial. I think if you're going to take one thing, if you read through this, this article, is that maybe it's worth exploring this perspective, because if we can help kids before they get in trouble with drugs then that may be a way we can save lives. We already look for people who have trouble, like we we start teaching people, like, look, if a friend asks for, if a friend starts talking about, maybe this world would be better without me, or, you know, things like that, that we associate with, with depression and suicide. We tell people to speak up about it, tell an adult. And maybe we do need to put that same attention to drug use. Maybe we need to start associating those factors and, and, thinking about them as perhaps high risk for drug use. I think the problem comes down to, um, I was identified pretty early on in high school by our counselor. He was like, you're gonna grow up and have problems with drugs. And I was like, what, me, no way. Like, I like smoking pot, but like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be an addict. Like, I, I know my family has addiction. Like, I'm well aware of it. Like, that's not gonna be me. And it really didn't matter what you would have told me at a young age. Like, I wasn't gonna change what I was doing. I thought it was fine. And it wasn't until I was in, you know, late 20s that, like, I really started to have a problem with drugs. Well, maybe mid, you know, closer to mid to late 20s. And I don't think that anything could have changed that. I'm not sure that early intervention, maybe if I had gotten out of a relationship, maybe if I had changed things back then. But I don't think I would have done that. Uh, drugs was a way to to kind of escape reality at the time. But I'm not sure that anything that happened to me earlier in life would have changed that path. 
Now, perhaps for some people it could. If we know somebody's dealt with extreme trauma as a child and we associate that with a risk factor for drug use later, maybe we can get children involved in therapy early on. Maybe we can have a more hands-on approach to helping them. I don't know. So as I'm saying, that's not that's not from me. Again, that's what that's one of the conclusions of this article. And if anything is going to be looked at from this article that could be beneficial, that would be what it would be. Um, overall, my my overall review of this article is okay. It's not controversial. So who cares? I mean, maybe it's just me, but like, I don't see the difference whether you tell me addiction is a disease or addiction is because my brain has changed because I've learned environmental factors. They're both acknowledging that your brain chemistry has changed and the individual has become a little bit powerless to do anything about it without outside support. That's what's important, right? Knowing we need outside support, knowing that we need help, knowing that we can't do this on our own. If you feel more empowered to look at a, a addiction as something other than, than a disease, then you know what? Maybe that's better for you. I don't know. For me, the way I look at things is whatever's going to get you on the path to recovery, whatever's going to make it easier for you to wake up in the morning and go get help, that's how you should look at it. I don't care what it is. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm not, I'm not anything. All I am is a person who identifies themselves as an addict in recovery who has not used drugs in about six and a half years. That's it. That's all I can say. That's where my experience comes down to. I don't pretend to, to know more than I do. I do read a lot of articles and I watch a lot of um, videos and studies because I'm very interested in what that means to us. But I don't think I know everything. And I think that it's, I think we should review different people's perspectives on addiction. How are we supposed to learn how to help people if we close our minds to other options? Maybe the whole Rat Park thing we know, right? So this is saying like, if we think about outside factors, maybe we can help more people. Maybe we can. What's important for me is this. This guy is not saying that if addiction is not a disease, that we're all bad people who made bad choices. That's what's important. That's why this has become clickbaity. Because when you tell somebody that addiction is not a disease, it's a way of telling them that you don't think that, that you believe they've had control over every bad choice they've made and that it's their fault their lives are shit. Sorry, I don't usually curse on my channel. But like, that's why people say that. But that's not what this guy's saying. He's not trying to say that people are responsible for, for being addicts. He still believes that it's beyond their control. So either way, we need to help each other. Either way, we need to share our experience, right? Either way, we need to share what works for us in recovery. So regardless of whether you think addiction is a disease or not, we can all recognize that we need help. If I could get clean on my own, like I wouldn't need any of this. But I know that that's not true. So I would really love to hear how you feel. Do you feel like addiction being a disease has helped you? Or do you feel like that stigma creates a problem for you? Has anybody else read this? Um, I'll put the information down in the description. It is a journal article, so you'd probably need like a school account or have access to that. I was very lucky that someone sent this to me. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Read the journal, read the article. Tell me if you look at it differently. Tell me your thoughts. Like, how how can we take new information, even if it seems controversial, and use it to help us move forward as a, as a recovery community? I'm always interested in learning more, and I love hearing your opinions. So thank you so much. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do. I really am enjoying the conversations with people, and this way you'll also know when I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I hope you all have a really, really wonderful weekend. Bye, guys.